My name is Doug Markaida. I am a Filipino martial arts practitioner and I have deep roots in Pekiki Tertia, Cali de Leon, and Baraco Batangueño Barisong. What we're going to be doing today is presenting the art of the karambe. I got started with uh, initially with Omar Hakim when I saw Pekiti Tertia. I learned the other facets of Pekiti through Bill McGrath and Tom Bizio before graduating on to Grand Tuhan Leo Gahe, the head of the system. I also have roots with uh, Kali De Leon under Master Guru Jun De Leon and the Barako Batangenyo, which is not really a system but more of a philosophy of training through Tito Jun Saludo. And these are the three main uh, Holy Trinity, I call them, of my teachers. My first exposure to the karambit was through Omar Hakim. He showed me the karambit as one of the feral untamed blades of his uh, relationship with Silat. I also learned the karambit from Marpati Puti instructors when I was in the Air Force and we had an exchange program with some of the Indonesian Air Force instructors. Most martial arts styles uh, that I've seen use the karambit are from Southeast Asia. The countries of uh, Indonesia and Malaysia practice silat. In the Philippines, the karambit is called as sangot or used as a farming tool rather than a particular weapon. But when introduced to me by my teachers, we started looking at the karambit as a curved weapon blade. So it really complements um, the Filipino martial arts in terms of the knife as a curved blade with the different attributes of controlling because of the curve. But you still have the puncturing, you still have the lacerating, you still have the impact use of the uh, karambit. You want to catch her? Just to cut, 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 cut. See? Mm -hmm. Cut, 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 cut. It's the sharpness of that, right? The design of the karambit is once again made to mimic the claws or uh, the tooth of some animals. It has the ability to control and hook into its prey. Most karambits, the traditional ones, are double-edged and you can slash with the weapon on the inside part of the karambit or the outside part of the karambit. It has the ability to puncture because of the point. Some karambits like this has also another point in the edge, so on the drawback can also puncture. Other karambits have the ability on this side to act as impact when they're hitting with it, but in other versions of it also put another point so they can thrust with it on the top side of the knuckle. So the karambits are very versatile in its use and in modern day use you will find that the karambit has been transferred from a fixed blade into what they have now as a folder version of the karambit where the karambit can be kept legal in use by the ability to have it folded, ease of carry, it stays legal because it is not double-edged. This particular model here that we're using here that we're presenting. So this is the modern use of the karambit as you can find nowadays as a folder. One of the features of the karambit is that it does have its finger ring in here. And a lot of people believe that in times of stress, the hands may open up and drop the blade. So in straight blades, the ability of that is missing. Whereas in the karambit, you have that. Break that thinking. Aye. One thing you want to try to beat catches it. Punch here. Blade goes underneath. Shoot it in and down. Come up. Most of my students I train are civilian practitioners of the art, but I do have a lot of uh, law enforcement personnel, military guys that come to us. Most of the blades that are used for law enforcement are used as a backup. We always go to the primary weapon when the lethal use of force is allowed. The primary is always a firearm. Let's say they're not able to get to their firearm, they use the karambit, and when it opens, they can just cut away so that they can back to their regular gun. I can control. Just the pressure on there, see that? Wrist lock. So it's like a half a handcuff. Right? Putting videos of my art, 
putting videos of the brothers that I teach, my students, uh, my friends that we put together and celebrating the art allows me to enjoy what I'm doing and share that fun. Putting that video together really is for my sons. I have three sons that really enjoy it. They think uh, it's something special when I spend time away from them and to do this. They get a chance to see this and see what their dad's up to. And that's why I do this. And at the same time, I celebrate and I kind of, you know, pay homage to the teachers that have shown me this art and what I've done with it. The karambit, when you wield into it, it's like anything that you do, whether it be a knife, a stick, or a sword. It's a very exotic blade, but if you keep it fun, you always win. It doesn't matter whether it's going to be effective, it's dangerous, it's a weapon. It's edged. Like my teacher used to tell me, it's an exclamation point to any sentence you make. So if you have a good empty hand system, put a karambit in there, that's your, your exclamation point. You're watching Inside Martial Arts.